Oh, man, it is hot today. I'm just I'm kind of parched at the moment. You didn't bring your water bottle? No, no, I just, uh, yeah, it's just a day hike, but, you know, I just wish it was like some access, some water access, like a vending machine, you know, some Dasani, you know, some municipal water. I have my water bottle right here if you want to use that. <laughs> I'm all set with your germs, all right? I'm good. I'm just really thirsty, though. That's the, that's the thing. Do you want to use my water filter? Well, like for pumping some crap water from out here? <laughs> I'm all set with your, like, you know, hippie water filters, okay? I just... I just wish that there was like some, some access, you know, some availability of some water here. Because I'm just really thirsty, but there's just, there's nothing. There's nothing here. YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. One of the perks about being a Patreon contributor to my channel is that uh, members at a certain level get to essentially, what's the word, dictate. They get to dictate an episode topic, and that's what we're doing today. I've done that once before, and that resulted in the video you may have seen that was about how to sort of site and plan a retreat location or a homestead. Here's a link to it if you haven't seen it. That video has a really fun opening involving aliens airdropping bird flu infected, uh, bird flu infected clown zombies. I'm still working on that one. <laughs> uh, that, 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 just the opening alone is worth a look, but the, the video itself has a lot of information if you're interested in, in that topic. So that, that was the first time that I did that. This is the second time I'm doing it, and today's topic uh, was prompted by someone asking me to do a video about how to modify one's lifestyle to sort of harmonize with solar cycles. Uh, uh, the, the idea being that you would do things at different times of the day to get you know, maximum solar help for whatever you're doing. Uh, you know, like if you're gonna boil water using the sun, obviously you're not gonna do that at midnight. So it wanted, it, they wanted me to talk about how I've modified my own life to get more out of the sun's free energy so that I, you know, I don't have to use other inputs. Um, and we're gonna do that. That's a great video. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, skill set, and that has added a lot to my quality of life. And I'm gonna talk about that, but I'm gonna go even broader in this video. And I want to talk generally about the idea of maintaining your quality of life and happiness on less inputs in general. Not just uh, you know getting energy from the sun, but uh, all sorts of ways that you can modify your life in order to be comfortable and happy and content while using less stuff. Because in any kind of a, cr a crisis or a collapse, the inputs of stuff almost certainly are going to you know diminish. Or maybe you know depending on the on the crisis, there could be a, a massive influx of more locusts. So you got that <laughs> extra resource. But in general, the stuff that we're used to using uh, is going to be harder to come by in a crisis. And what I want to talk about today is how to be totally cool with that. While discussing ideas in this video, uh, some of the ideas are going to be the ideas that require some sort of a remodel of a house or you know, a house to be designed in a certain way. And those will be helpful to people that are designing their homestead, designing their retreat right now. Uh, but the majority of the ideas that I'm going to talk about are ideas that either just need, you know, a, a simple, you know, not necessarily very expensive product to, to utilize, or just the idea of sort of changing the way that you, you approach your daily routines that allow you to, you know, better maximize all the free stuff that's around us all the time. I've broken this video up into three different parts. One is sun, uh, you know, the constant supply of solar energy that we have around us all the time. The second is water, how to better uh, utilize your water resources so that you don't need as much of it. You can still get everything you want done, but using less of it, which means you, have to, you don't have to procure as much of it. And the third aspect of the video is the idea of, of temperature, heat and cool. Uh, we all know our bodies need to exist in a certain temperature range, and uh, preserving that temperature can make it easier for us such that we don't have to pr procure fuels or, you know, or whatnot to, you know, to make ourselves comfortable. So the better that you can sort of sustain those temperatures and uh, keep them going without, you know, outside inputs, the better off you're going to be. 
The first thing I want to talk about is solar energy. I think it's an obvious one. It's all around us. It's illuminating the room that I'm in right now. It's also heating the room that I'm in right now. I'm in a wraparound greenhouse that I built around my house after the house was constructed. And while it's below 30 outside, it's about 60 plus degrees in here. Very comfortable and uh, it's all just due to solar energy. But I think when people usually think about solar energy, they're oftentimes thinking about solar electric energy. So let's, let's start with that one. Uh, yeah, I live in New England and all over the place, there's solar farms going up everywhere. People are finally taking advantage of this resource. And even with the recent Trump uh, tariffs that have bumped up the cost of solar panels for Americans. Well, that was offensive. Are you one of the millions of Americans who think Praxis Prepper has just gone too far? Are you asking yourself how anyone with a different view on foreign policy could ever teach you anything about gardening or other survival skills? Praxis Prepper actually carries a gun? I can't listen to him. You mean that guy who goes on mile-long runs in the middle of the winter in his underwear just to prove a point? Sounds like he's trying to make up for some shortcomings if you ask me. Well, unsubscribing from Praxis Prepper has never been easier. In the past, unsubbing on YouTube was a nightmare. There were mail-in forms, messy waxes, not to mention those hard-to-clean blades, but no more. Now, unsubscribing to Praxis Prepper is as easy as the click of a button. Simply scroll down to the unsubscribe button, click it, and instantly you're back in a safe space. The man cans trash. I mean trash in other people's dumpsters. Just count me out. Praxis Prepper literally used a chainsaw to saw off his daughter's head. Praxis ain't no prepper. He doesn't even do gear reviews. That's right. Your safe space is just one click away. Unsubscribe today. Uh... It's, it's still a completely an investment worth making because the energy is just sitting out there waiting to be captured by you. And there's a lot that you can do with it. I'll explain a little bit about what I've done with it at my house. Uh, I've got two separate solar systems. Uh, the first one that I set up runs the refrigerator and a couple of power outlets within my home. And I did that uh, because when the power went out, you know, I didn't want the food uh, you know, going bad in the, in the refrigerator and sometimes you use one electric outlet to run a computer or, you know, recharge a battery or something like that. Uh, that's just a very small system. Uh, didn't cost me that much money. And, uh, and because it was small, I was able to put it together myself. Uh, and that's worked out very well. It runs a refrigerator and it takes, uh, that, that reduces my electric bill because I, I do still have my house connected to the grid. I use a lot of grid power. Well, not a lot of grid power. I use less than most people, but I use plenty of grid power. But I, I have critical systems on solar so that, you know, when the grid goes down, they stay up. Uh, the second solar system that I created was uh, to keep water flowing into my house. Now, I need grid in order to pump from my well, but what I've done is I've added a 200-gallon cistern uh, to my house so that I can pump water from the well you know, once every week or two, fill up that cistern, or whenever there's going to be a, a big snow or ice storm, I'll always fill it up right before that. Uh, and then I've got 200 gallons in my house, and I have a pressure pump, a DC pressure pump, you know, direct current pump that will pressurize that water out into the house. And I run that pump from another solar array system. I've got six solar panels, uh, six 100 watt solar panels that run into a four battery bank ar array. And straight off those batteries, I run the pressure pump and that keeps water go flowing out to the house, you know, even if the power has gone out to the rest of uh, the rest of the world. So it is uh, a great way of keeping critical systems in, in your house up, keeping you uh, you know, keeping your food from spoiling and keeping you having easy, convenient access to water, even if uh, if the grids goes down. Uh, there's other things you can do with solar power as well, though. Uh, and one of those, uh, like I alluded to, was war uh, heat for warming things. Uh, I constantly, all, all summertime, am using sun ovens to, to cook with. I've got two of them. I found that I like to have two because it allowed me to, you know, cook two different things. I could cook like a pot of rice, and I could cook, you know, some vegetables or something like that because, uh, you know, sun ovens oftentimes are not very large. So you can have two different pots going. Uh, who needs pot holders? It was just an average afternoon when we're home. Usually have a couple of ovens going. Oh, should we look up, up there? Any alien spaceships? Yeah. This is a classic setup, you know, coming out of the house. Oh, there's spaceships up there. Yeah, anyway. Okay, so we've got a couple of solar ovens cooking right here. One of them's got a uh, warming up lasagna that I'd made the other day. And this one over here has some pizza that I'm reheating. Uh, just open this one up. And yeah, they're getting pretty close in that oven there. 
So I'll probably finish those up in just a bit. I'm gonna come around over to this side and I'm cooking some water. I usually like to just have some hot water available. So I've got some hot water going right over on this guy here. This is great setup for heating up water, pretty much nothing else because it's just so powerful. I've had this thing like crack cast iron pots. I tried cooking chili over it once. It burned the chili to the bottom and then just heated the crap out of the bottom of the pot, cracked the cast iron pot. Really strong, super good for heating water, but kind of too powerful for anything else. But it's a great resource because we constantly have tons of free energy coming from right up there, and you might as well use it. Uh, all I'll do is I'll just set up in the morning, point them roughly in a southerly direction. That doesn't have to be perfect with a sun oven. And as the sun goes by, it will drop into your sun oven and cook your food. And then at the end of the day, your food's all warm and cooked and ready to go. It actually is kind of a time saver using that because you don't have to manage the oven and turn it on and off. It, it turns itself on when the sun goes by and turns itself off when the sun leaves. Uh, and that works really well. In fact, uh, cooking beans and lasagna in a sun oven is really among the best ways to cook those two particular foods. It never overcooks them. Uh, it's just really perfect. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, if you haven't tried sun oven cooking, definitely worth a try. We got one solar oven, two solar ovens, there's a parabolic solar cooker in the back. These things are all great. I'm using these things all the time, but each one of these represents hundreds of dollars. Now, I bought these back when I had a little bit more disposable income, but today I don't have that kind of disposable income. I would not spend the money on these things. Well, I guess if I didn't have one, I would give it some heavy consideration because you save so much energy in it. But it would be a hard decision for me to make to do these things today, whereas in the past it was pretty easy. But you don't have to spend all this money to buy these things. And you don't even have to, you know, be crafty and do a DIY project with hammers and nails and measuring tapes and anything like that. You can just throw it together with stuff that you find on hand. Here, I'm going to show you what I got going over in the car over here. You know, you always hear that people say, you know, don't leave your dog in the car, don't leave your kids in the car because the thing can turn into an oven. Literally, it can turn into an oven. And uh, you can maximize that with just a little bit of ingenuity on your part. I'm gonna pop right in here and show you what I have going on inside. All right, as you can see, I've got a tray. And on the tray, there are two pieces of pizza. And uh, all I did to really modify it was just to take a glass cutting board and I put the glass cutting board on top. Now the car itself, you could do a decent job just heating up pizza in a car because you know it gets really hot in there in the summer uh, but having uh, the pizza in this enclosed environment you know in that sandwich between the glass and the the tray works perfectly now did I go out perfect uh, specifically to get a glass cutting board and to get a tray like this no I just found what I had on hand I, I found a, a tray that I, I had uh, access to I had a glass cutting board put them together, it creates a, a closed environment, and that's essentially what a solar oven is. So you, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars, and you don't even have to be crafty to put this stuff together. You just have to be clever. I know a lot of people talk about these big parabolic solar cookers that, uh, you know, it's a big parabolic mirror, looks like a satellite dish. Um, I've got one of those. I use that very frequently. If I had to choose between one or the other, I would absolutely hands down go with the, the sun oven. Much more functional for, most of the stuff that you want to do. The big parabolic solar cookers, you know, there's all sorts of modifications you can do to them to kind of get them to work for, you know, cooking eggs or, you know, whatever, you know, stir fry, that kind of thing. Um, but it's much more user intensive uh, and you're constantly fighting stuff burning to the bottom because they're so hot, they're so intense. I know I cracked a cast iron pot using mine. That said, I've got one, I do use it frequently, but only for boiling and heating water. Uh, I have it in, uh, set up in a place that gets early morning sun. So in the morning time, you know, over the summer, if I have guests or something, I don't personally drink coffee, but you know, guests do. Uh, I can you know, have hot water out there and it's you know, ready and boiling for them. Uh, that takes a mild modification to my habits because I have to step outside to do that. Uh, also, I use it for warming up the water from my boy's bath. Uh, he's six years old, he'll do a bath every other day. And I've got a really giant uh, jug uh, or pot of water that I'll put on there. It's all been spray painted black to, to you know, get more of the sun's uh, radiated energy into it. And that heats up in the early part of the day because where I'm personally situated, I don't get a lot of sun towards the end of the day. Uh, so what I, like I said, I put the, the, that 
dish in a place that gets early morning sun, but it's not really good for later on. So what I've done to make that easier for my lifestyle, so I don't have to tell my boy, oh, you have to take a bath now because the water's ready, is I have a very large insulated bag that's made for keeping food warm. Uh, and what I do is I just put his hot bath water in that, get it all covered up, pull the drawstring, and that stays really warm until the end of the day, and then there's more than enough hot water for his bath uh, to do that. So that's another uh, good use of, uh, of the sun is getting heat energy out of it. You can also use it uh, to put uh, solar um, collecting arrays on your house to heat your domestic water. There's a bit of infrastructure associated with that. I haven't done that myself, but even without doing that, you can use it with a sun oven or a parabolic solar cooker to get its heat out that way. The one other way that I wanted to mention about using the sun's energy, and I alluded to it earlier, it's what's allowing us to see in this room is by using it for its light to see by. So many people's modern houses today are, are just so poorly designed uh, when it comes to this, this one question, where it can be bright and sunny outside, but if you're in the home, you can't see a thing. So uh, you have to turn a light on, and that is either taxing the grid, or even if you have solar panels, it's taxing your batteries and everything where you could be utilizing direct light directly from the sun. Now, this is something you really have to design more into your home as you're doing it. I guess you could retrofit like light tubes and things of that nature, uh, but this is, that, that's more something that there's more advantage to be had if you're designing a home. But keeping in mind the idea of allowing the light to come into the house, maybe with your open concept, maybe by having translucent walls in certain rooms so that the light from other rooms can, can penetrate into those rooms so that you can, you can function in there without having to turn on a light. All those are things to think about. But the sun's energy is something that is very useful, very free all the time, and just waiting for you to pick it up. Next, we're going to talk about water. The big thing that you're doing with water is really trying to conserve the resource and use it as many times as possible before you actually end up disposing of it. You can uh, work on getting more water, increasing your resource with things like uh, rainwater, catchment, and things like that, but I'm going to focus more on techniques that anybody can use within their home that can allow them to use less water but still get the same amount of work done. Uh, I'm here in the bathroom. I'm sitting on my cast iron tub. This is an old used cast iron tub that I got from some church in Boston, Massachusetts. I refinished the outside of it, made it all nice and pretty with this blue paint and speckles and all that. I never refinished the inside of it, and while the inside of it is sanitary, it's clean, uh, it's kind of bumpy and it's got some rust spots and things like that. It looks like a horror movie tub. Um, um, so both because of that and because of uh, my, you know, my boy has always been using, you know, little kid tubs and then he, he graduated to larger tubs and everything like that. What I ended up doing instead of having my boy just take a bath right in the bathtub is that I put a storage tub in here, a nice plastic storage tub, plenty big, and, and he can take his baths right in there. And that does a couple of things. One, it allows us to very easily save the water because it's in this nice big tub. It also keeps the water warmer because, you know, specifically with the cast iron, tub they tend to suck the heat out of the water really quickly you know, just because of the nature it's got big thermal mass sucks the heat out and also if he was taking baths in this the full tub it takes a lot more water to fill the tub up to the same level so he's always done it in here and one benefit is that like i said it makes it really easy to to hold on to that water and then use it for other purposes. I've got these buckets here next to the toilet and what we rut routinely do all the time is we'll just take these buckets scoop up out of uh out of his bathtub let it, set them here. I have a little rack so they don't sit like wet on the bottom on the floor or anything like that. There's a little wooden rack they sit on. And whenever we need to flush a toilet, we use this old bath water for flushing the toilet, which is a perfectly appropriate use. It's slightly soapy. It has a little bit of like, you know, washed off dead skin cells, but it's totally fine for flushing your pee or your poop down the toilet. It does not have to be drinking water to flush pee down the toilet. And the buckets actually work really, really well. They're more forceful. You get more force pouring a bucket into the toilet than you do with a regular flushing device. So there aren't really any trade-offs from my perspective, other than the fact you kind of have to have some buckets on hand. I'm going to be building another house soon, and in that house I'm going to kind of integrate sort of the gray water storage system on the other side of a wall to be a, a large spigot, which will allow someone to quickly fill up a bucket. Uh, so you, we'll still be able to do that, but we won't have to have all this like kind of storage space taken up in the bathroom itself. Also going on uh, by the bathroom sink where people, you know, brush your teeth, spit out, you know, water, things like that, wash your hands, whatever. Uh, I replaced the trap underneath the bathroom sink with a five gallon jug and we collect all the water that, you know, people use washing their hands, brushing their teeth and all that kind of stuff in that five gallon jug, which you have to be really careful that you don't allow to overflow. I, I even have some signs up at the top saying, don't overflow the bucket. Always check the bucket underneath. Um, so 
We can use that for flushing the toilets as well. And whenever we have more water than we need, which is very frequent, this system, you know, uh, frequently has so much water that we can't keep it in the buckets and we need to do something else with it, I'll pour it down the kitchen sink, which I have plumbed and it, that goes out into the greenhouse and it waters plants out in the greenhouse in a greenhouse garden area. So right there, we are get all almost always getting two uses out of any of the water that we use here in the bathroom. Once for its initial use and then a second time for flushing the toilets or watering the gardens out there. And that immediately right there, that alone cuts down the amount of water that we need, the amount of clean new water coming into this the system we have going here it cuts that number down by half which is a huge reduction 50% savings i mean if you got like a 50% off coupon at any store you'd be like damn i got to use this you know um, but you can do that in your own bathroom cut down your usage by half and still get all the same things done the last resource that I wanted to talk about was thermal resources whether you're expending energy to heat or cool your home or anything Whatever effort you're putting into that, there's no reason not to get the maximum benefit out of it. Well, I was just speaking about the, uh, the water conservation stuff that I do. A lot of that also is thermal conservation. For instance, the hot water that goes into my boy's bath and goes into our shower sits in that, in that tub in, as opposed to just going down the drain and then going out into the septic system or, or you know, the sewage system. And a substantial amount of heat energy is invested in that water. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to heat water up to that temperature and if you're just letting it go down the drain you're losing all that energy out in the sewer pipes or wherever you know it goes for your particular situation whereas if you're keeping that water in that tub it's radiating that warmth out into your house. Now in the winter that's a good thing maybe not so much of a, a good thing in the summer but whatever time of year it is whatever your your circumstance is it pays to to think about the resources that you have available in terms of different temperatures and not throw them away. Even when we, we're taking water in the winter time and we're uh, dumping it out into the greenhouse behind me is like the uh, the greenhouse area where uh, the, the gray water comes out, that contains a lot of heat energy as well. And while we're not keeping that heat energy in our house when we dump it down the drain like that, it does come out into the greenhouse and it keeps the greenhouse slightly warmer uh, in the winter time. And that in the greenhouse is providing kind of a, a warm shroud around our house. So I think everyone's individual circumstances are different when it comes to thermal and water and sun, but if you take some time th and think about these things, there are lots of ways that you can close it off loops, get rid of waste, and maximize the resources that you have available. During normal times, that's going to save you probably a substantial amount of money and maybe a bunch of time, but during a crisis, it could really save your life. I hope you found some of, this, uh, some of these tips helpful. These are things that I do all the time in my daily life. They're not that onerous. If they were, I, I, I probably wouldn't be doing them because, you know, you get busy, life, life fills in the cracks and everything like that. But a lot of these things are real life improvements for me. And I hope that if you try some of them, you'll find benefit in them as well. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.